history of principal physics this time we are going to learn about current but this is module 2 the second video so please do check the first video it's there in the description box I mean the link is given in the description box below but if you are new to this channel please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications whenever I upload a new video now before wasting any more time let's move into the video so last time we have ended over here in this situation that we have generally without any kind of source attached or when the switch is off the electrons or the free electrons these dots are basically the free electrons so these free electrons are randomly moving in all possible directions in the metal or inside the conductor now when you are switching on the circuit or you are attaching a source a battery a cell whatever you are attaching to the circuit whenever you are giving the electrons a cause to flow in a particular direction the electrons will start moving in a fixed direction so this directed flow of electrons is called current so we can say that directed flow of electrons is known as current so this is the physical quantity that we are going to learn today current but when we are going into the deeper knowledge of current i would like to add some more words over here number one we always measure current as the number of electrons passing through the cross-sectional area of a conductor or metal that means we always take a cross-sectional area inside the conductor and we count how many number of electrons are passing through it so the first thing that we need to find that how many numbers of electrons are passing through the conductor now each and every electron is having a particular charge uh, can you tell me what is the value of the charge you can definitely pause the video and find the value but let me help you right now the charge of an electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb this is the value of charge that we have in case of an electron an electron is carrying this much of charge and definitely you can add up a negative sign because the electron is a negatively charged particle so definitely we are going to find that how many number of electrons are passing through a cross-sectional area and another important point that you have to remember that this is the direction of electron flow and this is your cross-sectional area so if I say this is my direction of electron flow and this is the cross-sectional area that means we always take the cross-sectional area or the cross-section through which the number of electrons are passing is perpendicular to the flow of electrons that is another important point to understand so electrons are flowing through a conductor we are considering a cross-sectional area perpendicular to the flow of electrons and we are finding that how many number of electrons are passing through it and each and every electron is carrying a charge so we are going to find what is the total charge that is passing through a cross-sectional area and from there we will definitely find current now let us finally go into the definition or proper scientific definition of current okay okay so the final definition for current that i would like to write as current is rate of flow of electrons through a cross-sectional area of conductor perpendicular to the flow of electrons now let us first come to the word rate whenever in physics we use the word rate it is basically divided by time so first we are going to find that how many electrons are passing through a conductor or passing through the cross-sectional area of a conductor so the first point that you have to you have to find is that number of electrons passing through the cross-sectional area and just write CS area over here then you are going to find what is the charge 
charge passing through that area and third you need to find that what is the time taken for that charges to pass through the cross-sectional area and after that you can calculate current so what is the formula for current that we can find over here basically the formula for current i in physics we use the letter i to mention about current and everything the symbol used over here is i so i is q by t where q is the charge that passes through the cross-sectional area and t is the time taken for q amount of charge to pass through so the i is the current so i is equals to q by t this is the formula over here but basically what the scenario over here is we can further write this formula or divide this formula into another form like for example i am saying that uh, n number of electrons are passing through the cross-sectional area okay the number of electrons are n let us assume the charge of an electron charge of an electron is e the value we already know the value of e which is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power 19 cool okay so i'm just not writing it anymore i'm writing the charge of an electron is e so what is the total charge so i can say the total charge is n into e this is my total charge which can be denoted by q so q is the total charge n into e where n is the number of electrons and e is the charge of one electron so for the from here we can again write this as a formula for i that i is equals to q by t which can be written as n e by t clear So this is the final formula for current that we are going to work on i is equals to q by t now if you know this formula you can find the value for t you can find the value for q you can find the value for current depending on which kind of sum or numerical is given to you but there are some set of students who find it very difficult to derive different formulas for t and q from this one single expression so i would give you a shortcut idea to find the different values or different formulas from here what you have to do is just make a triangle we have q so i'll write q we have i and t i and t this this we can take as a divide symbol and this we can take as a multiply symbol now from here whichever quantity you need to find you just have to put your finger fingers on it like for example i want to find the value for i so i'll just cover up i what you can see q by t so from here i can say i is equals to q by t next if you want to find t cover it up what you can see q by i so for t the value is q by i now if you want to find the value for q so cover up q with your fingers and what you can see i and t side by side so it is i cover up q over here so what you can see i and t so i into t so for q the value formula is i into t using this triangle method you can find different formulas from one single expression okay now let us come back to the si unit of current now we are going to find the si unit for current now q is the charge so what is the si unit of charge si unit of charge which is denoted over here with q is coulomb c si unit of time tell me what is the si unit of time you all know that absolutely correct it's second so i can say that si unit of current 
I is coulomb per second, coulomb per second, which can be written as ampere. A M P E R E. Now, as you all know, ampere is the name of a scientist. So definitely, you cannot write the symbol A with small A, or you cannot write the whole unit with capital A. So if you are writing the whole unit, you will write it with small a, and if you are writing the symbol only, you can use capital A. So I can say that is a unit of current is ampere. Clear? Now we will move into the definition of this SI unit. Okay? So next we are going to find the definition of 1 ampere. So if I find 1 ampere, it should be 1 coulomb by 1 second. So what is the definition? If 1 coulomb of charge is passing through a cross sectional area of a conductor in 1 second, then the current that is passing through the conductor is 1 ampere. Let me repeat again. If 1 coulomb of charge is passing through the cross sectional area of a conductor in 1 second, then the current through the conductor is 1 ampere. Let me write it for you. So from here I can write it as that if one coulomb charge is passing through the cross sectional area of the conductor in one second then the current is one ampere so just keep this in mind one coulomb of charge in one second through the cross-sectional area of the conductor is one ampere clear the next thing that we are going to learn over here as you can see it's already written Current is fast but electrons are slow. What do I actually mean by that? Let us have a small test. I don't know whether it's going to work or not. I just thought of testing that. So I have a mobile with a timer. I have the stopwatch already set over here to zero. You can see that it is zero. Now I'll switch off the light and then I'll just say switch on and I'll start the timer. I'll see that how much time does light take to switch it on. Okay, so please switch off the light. Now switch on. Okay, I can say it's just taken 1.31 second, but that is also my human error because with uh, two things humans can't do properly together. I will try once again. Uh, it's almost one second, 1.31 second it has taken. Uh, let's, I have reset it to zero again. So let's start. Please switch off. Now, one, two, three, go. Uh, 0.62 seconds you can see over here so from this experiment we can conclude that the whenever we are switching on the immediately even less than a second the light is on so that means it is a very fast process that electrons are traveling from the source or from the keyboard to the bulb or whatever devices you are using over here but I have written electrons are slower which thing is correct that how can if electrons are slower then how can we have the bulb on so fast even the signal speed the speed of the signal or you can say that the electrical energy travels very fast in fact almost um, most probably 50 percent to 99 percent of speed of light actually it's almost or near to the speed of light that um, electrical energy travels through a conductor then how can electrons are we uh, electrons are very slower why am i saying that electrons are very slower it is generally seen that an electron basically travels in a conductor about 
सपोज वी आर टेकिंग अ कॉपर वायर दैट वी जनरली यूज ओवर हियर अ कॉपर वायर ऑफ रेडियस वन मिलीमीटर एंड करेंट दैट वी आर टेकिंग ओवर हियर इज वन एम्पियर देन इलेक्ट्रॉन बेसिकली इन दिस केस और इन दिस सिनेरियो इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रेवल्स वन मीटर फॉर ट्वेल्व आर isn't it too slow even i think the snails will move faster than this so in a conductor basically in this situation that when we are taking 1 mm wire and the current is 1 ampere then in that case in one electrons take almost 12 hours to travel only 1 mm then how can the signals are very faster over there that means you are switching on and immediately the bulb is on then how can electrons travel over in that case so faster the situation over here is that imagine this is your bulb that you are having over here this is the switch i consider this is a switch over here now we have electrons throughout the conductor okay we have electrons throughout the conductor and as soon as you are switching on we are having that cause for the electrons to flow immediately in one direction so this electrons will immediately flow to the bulb uh, let me use some other color i guess that will be helpful for you so these electrons which are already closer to the bulb they will immediately flow into that bulb and the bulb is on now we have since the metals have huge number of free electrons so there is always another set of electrons which is ready to flow so there is a continuous flow it's not that that these electrons which is near to the source they are traveling throughout going to the bulb then only the bulb will be on no that is not the situation throughout the conductor we have lots of free electrons and the free electrons which are closer to the bulb they are immediately moving to the bulb and the bulb is on and there is always the other set of electrons are ready at the back of it to immediately move to the bulb so that is why the signals are traveling so faster it's not that this set of electrons are actually traveling throughout clear that's why we can say that the current is very fast we are immediately getting the current but electrons are actually very slow another important thing that we have to understand that as i said that one single electrons are carrying the charges over there so that means suppose i have a bulb over here uh, this is a conducting wire so one electron is going the bulb is on then another electron is going then again the bulb is on but is in real life we are seeing the bulb is on off then again another electron is coming bulb is on then off then again another one is coming on off do we see that flickering in a bulb at least i can't see any flicker in the bulb so what happens what so how can this electrons are uh, uh, coming one by one but still we can't see any flicker over there because in cases of current electricity it's not a discrete electrons which is coming we consider it is always flow or stream of electrons that we consider over here stream of electrons it's not only one single electrons coming and going coming and going it's huge number of electrons moving to together in one direction so that's why the bulbs doesn't flicker at least that means that means there is no almost the time gap between two electrons to flow through is negligible it's a stream of electrons not discrete electrons which is coming into the bulb and then the bulb is on clear all right so that's it for the day um, i guess all the doubts regarding current and all the questions that you have in your mind i am able to answer those questions but if you still have any questions please do write it in the comment section i am waiting for your questions and this is the module 2 so definitely first watch the module 1 and then go for this one and another thing that i would like to say that please follow all my social media accounts the description in the description box below i have given all the links and please subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed my channel till then thank you very much for watching the whole video and hope to see you in the next video bye bye